the Polish Levu tent, what I'm wearing right here. It's a tent and it can be a cape and it can be a number of things and I'm going to show you everything it can be in this video. So um, we'll crack on with that then. Hello, uh, I'm Dan Povey and this is my granddad, <laughs> my granddad Bruce. And uh, we're going to set up the Polish Levu tent now. And uh, it's a two man tent so two people are going to do the video. So uh, I'm just going to show you what the tent can do. And I'm just going to sort of, it's my first time ever setting a tent up, so I'm just going to show you how to do all that. And um, if you enjoy the video, uh, like like the video if you enjoyed it. So I'll make more like videos like that, because that's how I go by making the new ones. And uh, subscribe if you enjoy it, which gives us a good indication of who's watching the videos and just the general analytics of things, so I can uh, see the channel's growth. But um, anyway... Uh, we're going to set the tent up now, so uh, enjoy the video. So, another great thing about this tent is it's not really big at all. And it was designed so one man would carry each half in a set of poles, and the poles come in these nice little cloth bags. But it's great. It's not one man carrying this. is uh, It's just like any other tent, really. It's a bit heavier because it's canvas, but, um, you know, you you get better uh, benefits but uh, obviously if you were mountaineering or something this obviously wouldn't be the tent you would use this is just more for casual use you know uh, just bushcrafter use and uh, I suppose army use if that's uh, I don't know if they still use it anymore I'll have to look into that but uh, for size comparison this is the Grand Forsbrook small forest axe and it's about as long as that maybe a couple of inches more and uh, the poles are about two axes long as well and it's really not big so uh, you got this and I'll uh, put it in my bag now and I'll show you how I get it in there I can see for one man that's ideal but I find with, with them being canvas they're quite heavy uh, so when you put the two man tent up you definitely need two men yeah so ideal I think for your line of work yep ideal for bushcraft so I'm just going to pack it in the air bag now. And obviously I'm just one man with this backpack at my granddad's house, so I brought it here in this. It's the uh, Carrymore SF Predator. I think it's 40 litres. And then um, these, these side pouches, uh, Viper stuffer pouches, I think you call them. Something like that. If you're interested, just uh, leave a leave a message in the description box, in the comment box even. That's one away. We're not done though, because uh, we still got to put the poles in. Cheers. And that's in. Set of poles in one, and I might fit the other one in here as well. Yeah, that fits in nicely. In the pegs, I'm just gonna put them in here. Great. Right, so now we're gonna set up the tent. I've already uh I've already figured out the buttons on this side, so uh, we'll just crack on with that and we'll get the pole assembled. So uh, we've just done a test run, so we just pre assemble everything to have a quick go. But uh, we know what we're doing now with the tent, so we can just crack on with what we're doing. And uh, these poles, I think they're a bit slippy. When you're putting it in, it's a bit rattly and they can collapse a bit. Uh, what do you think about that? Well. I'd have preferred them to be fitting a bit tighter. Yeah, it'd be easier. So if we just uh, put them in like that, and then we we'll put it together, you got the big pole, which again is just collapsing. So I'll give this the ground while I find the middle, <laughs> and then we'll uh, start the set. So uh, 
uh, I'm just gonna stop putting the pegs in. Should have enough here. And I'll count them out so we know how many we've got. So that's 11, 10 pegs. Right, so now we're gonna set up. And I'm just gonna look at the guy line and uh, try and get a straight angle. Try and line the uh, opposite up. As you can see there, the tent's starting to take shape. Unfortunately, I have just put it up inside out. inside out but uh it shouldn't really matter for the video but if i was staying the night i would definitely want to change that it's not going to make a difference just for the video's purpose because we're going to be taking it down in a minute anyway and i'm going to do the uh the half configuration the half uh the one man configuration the half uh Levu configuration. We'll see how that goes. So uh, the 10 pegs that the Levu comes with are like, they come like weird bend. I don't know why they're like that. Uh, I haven't really seen that design before but uh, that's just the way they come so We'll make the most of what we got. But I'm using a combination of a lot of other pegs and seeing which are the best ones. I'll give you the verdict at the end. Do you want to uh, help straighten out the tent? So, we're all set up now. I'll take you around. Grounded's already in there. So, uh, there's the tent. That's open. It's really big if you have a look at it. It's like not a bad size. But we'll have a look at uh, the pros and cons when we're on the inside. But uh, other than that, it's a great tent. We're inside now. It's quite nice in here. It's quite spacious, but there's a few negatives. And uh, would you like to state some of the negatives? Well, there's too many buttons to fasten. Although you haven't shown around the video up to now, to get to yeah, this particular point, buttons. 
Yeah, I prefer zips, and if it was raining heavily, this is not the type of tent I would be wanting to try and put up. It take too long. Well, uh, yeah, but if you're experienced, you might be able to put up a bit faster. But it depends, really. It, it probably wouldn't have been issued to uh, the Polish army if uh, they wouldn't uh, wouldn't be able to get put up fast. But um, probably with the right training that you might be able to get it up in a shorter time. I don't know. Well, you said this particular tent was manufactured when? It's in. Uh, if I look at the target, I think it's 1977. And was it built for the Polish army? Yeah, 1977. Well, I would bet the Polish army doesn't have tents like this nowadays. I would imagine they have got zips on. Uh, yeah, I'll have to check on that one. But uh, the other thing is, this doesn't have a mosquito in it or a bug in it or anything. So you'll be having a bad time if, uh, if you're ever out in a lake area with a lot of midges or mosquitoes or whatever you get. But, um, it's good, it'll be good in the snow because you can actually put a stove on the inside so you can uh, cook inside and you can just like sort of have it as a little shelter. Uh, but that, that's like a good quality. But I'm going to use this on my next camping expedition and just try it out. And uh, right now I'm going to set up all my sleeping arrangements just so I'll show you what uh, the uh, inside will look like when I'm staying. So uh, stay tuned with the video and uh, don't click off yet because there's still a lot more to show. So this is what it's, uh, this is what the setup's gonna look like for my sleeping arrangement. It's just a nice and simple uh, foil roll mat, which I'm looking to upgrade to a thermo rest. Yeah. Just one of the uh, foam thermo rest, because I'm not a big fan of the inflatable roll mat. Uh, I just think they take up a bit too much room and uh, they're just a burden, unnecessary burden, I think. But uh, a lot of people have d other opinions and a lot of people swear by them. There ain't nothing wrong with them, but they're good. So uh, I'm going with the MDP British Army bivy bag. That's tried and tested, that's a brilliant thing. And I've got the um, mountain equipment helium um, sleeping bag, I think that's what it's called. And uh, what I'll use as the pillow is just the uh, dry bag for the sleeping bag and I'll stuff it with clothes. Obviously this is just a test demonstration, but that would be what I would do if uh, if I was going camping. So for my next video, that's what I'll be using. Um, and as you can see, my bag's over there. Over there is my hat. So again, just in short, I've got my foil roll mat, MDP British Army bivy bag. Uh, helium uh, mountain equipment sleeping bag and uh, carry more SF Predator backpack and the uh, Polish Lavu tent which is again I think it's brilliant it keeps the heat in nicely it's already getting boiling hot in here and I've only had it up for 10 minutes so um, we'll do the final verdict now and uh, we'll weigh up the pros and the cons and then we'll see if it's worth uh, the investment So I've uh, got the lavu set up in a half configuration. Obviously it's not ideal. I think I'm gonna add some uh, paracord sort of uh, guy lines just so I can line it up better and raise it from the ground a bit, just in case the canvas rots or something if I have it out for a while. But um, it's a great shelter overall. And um, I, think it's, I think it's worth uh, the money I paid for it. Uh, I didn't mention before, but uh, these are quite a sought after item. And you're probably on this video because you know it's a sought after item and you're looking at getting one before they all run out. But um, most of these have just been in storage for 30, 40 years, you know. They've just been sitting there waiting for uh, waiting for us bushcrafters to buy them. And uh, who would who would knew who would have knew back then that uh, they'd be so popular in the bushcraft community? But uh, I can see I can see the uh, attraction and appeal because. It's great to, uh, to have a sort of shelter like this, it's really hard wearing so uh, it's not going to set up in flames if you have a fire next to it. Especially with this bivy bag set up, I've got an extra layer of protection on my sleeping bag just so nothing goes up in flames and disaster. But um, I'll, uh, as I said on my next camping trip, I don't know when that'll be yet, 
I'm trying to organise one. I know I will be at Camp Bob on the next Camp Bob meet. I think it's on the 10th of July. I'll see everyone there. Um, that'll be that'll be good. But um, yeah, again, it's not the ideal. It's a bit saggy, and I think those rings will make a hell of a lot of difference. But uh, that'll be on the camping trip. So uh, stay tuned for then. But um, I'm Dan Povey, and uh, I will see you later. And I hope you enjoyed the video again. Um, like and subscribe. See you later. You keep quiet. Obviously that's not ideal, but I'm not going anywhere far with it. And if I was doing this in the long term, the bivy would probably be strapped to the bottom in the sleeping bag, would be inside in the stuff bag. But just for this quick demonstration, I'll put it in like that. But I usually have my fleece and some food in there. And uh, just stuff like air rifle pellets, knives, and all that stuff. But um, that's it for the uh, Lavu. Hope you enjoyed the video.